In this lesson, we are going to start to look at graphs of exponential functions. So before we look at that, we're going to look at um, a linear function and a quadratic and compare their graphs and properties with an exponential graph. So let's start by graphing y equals 2x. So in order to make a graph, perhaps we'll make a table of values. So we're just picking some numbers for x in our table, and then we're going to multiply each x value by 2 to get the y value. So the first two are done for you. Uh, 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. So what this does is create some ordered pairs that we can graph. So the first point would be negative 3, negative 6. The next point would be negative 2, negative 4. Then we're going to multiply uh, 2 by negative 1, 2 by 0, 2 by 1, 2 by 2, and 2 by 3. So we get a few ordered pairs that we can use to graph, keeping in mind that whenever we want to know what a graph looks like, it's very simple to just pick some values for x, plug them into the equation and find the values of y. So I'm going to plot these on this grid here and see what it looks like. So we have negative 3, negative 6, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We have negative 2, negative 4, um, negative 1, negative 1, Oh, sorry, negative 1, negative 2, 0, 0, 1, 2, 2, 4. So I can see by the points that I've graphed that it does indeed give me a linear equation, which is what I expected by the equation. And another way to tell whether it's linear or nonlinear is to look at those first differences. So the first differences are how the y values are changing. So we can subtract. That's why they're called differences, because we can subtract the y values to see how that is changing every time we increase the x by 1. So if we go from negative 6 to negative 4, in order to find the difference, we just take the second number and subtract the one before it. So negative 4 minus a negative 6 would be like adding 6, so that equals 2. Then we would have negative 2 minus negative 4. That would also be 2. Then we'd have 0 minus negative 2. Then we would have 2 minus 0, 4 minus 2, and 6 minus 4. So we can see that first, oops, that's not a 4, that's a 2. That first difference is the same, right? The y values are consistently increasing by 2. So the first distant differences are the same, which tells us that the graph is a straight line. So we did all this in grade 9. We know that it's a straight line based on the equation, 2 times x. We have 1x, 1y. We know it is a straight line because we plotted the points, and we know it is a straight line because we look at those first differences, and they are the same. Now we're going to graph y equals x squared. So knowing from grade 10, we know that this is going to produce a, well, this is a quadratic function, which should produce a shape that looks like a parabola. We did this all in grade 10. So again, we can make a table of values. <clears throat> this time we're squaring the value of x. We're going to use the same values of x in our table, and we're just going to square those values to get some points. Okay, so I'm going to plot those on this grid here. So we've got 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 4, 3, 9. Oop, that's in the wrong spot. And then we'll have the same points on the other side. And we get that shape that looks like a parabola. So that is what we expected, knowing the equation. 
Uh, the other way to see if it's a power two or a quadratic is to do those differences. So the first difference is four minus nine, one minus four, zero minus one, one minus zero, four minus one, and nine minus four. I can see that those first differences are not the same. So the first differences are not the same. That tells me that it's not a straight line. If it's the same, it's a straight line. If it's not the same, it's not a straight line. So what we can do is we can do it again. We'll do the second differences. So we're again subtracting. So negative three minus negative five, negative one minus negative three. Then we're gonna do one minus negative one. Then we're gonna do three minus one. And we're gonna do five minus three. So if I do those second differences, I can see that they are the same value. So are the second differences the same? Yes. So if the first differences are not the same, I know it's nonlinear. If the second differences are the same, I know it's a quadratic. And I can see that by the graph. I can see that knowing the equation is power two, I know that that is a uh, quadratic, uh, which produces a parabola. Okay, so now we're going to get into exponential functions. So we're going to graph y equals 2 to the power x. What makes it an exponential function is that the exponent is the variable. So this is an exponential function, and the exponent is the variable. So we're doing to the power. So here we're doing two to the power zero equals one. Two to the power one equals two. Two to the power two equals four. And two to the power three equals eight. So I'm gonna plot these points on this grid here. So we've got zero, one, one, two, two, four, and three, eight. So I can see it rises quite steeply on the right. On the left, we had some negative values. So remember that two to the negative one is one over two. Two to the negative two is one over two squared or one quarter. And two to the negative three is one over two to the three or one over eight. So when I plot these, I can see that that fraction is getting smaller, a half, a quarter, an eighth, and that's gonna continue forever. That fraction is gonna get smaller and smaller and smaller and it will never get to zero. That fraction will always be able to be reduced by half and it will never get to zero. So the line, uh, let's make this a little bit finer. So the line approaches the x-axis. and it never reaches zero, it never touches. So it will get closer and closer and closer because that fraction will get smaller and smaller and smaller, but it will never touch the x-axis. So let's look at those first differences. So we have a quarter minus an eighth is an eighth. We have a half minus a quarter. We have one minus a half is a half. We get two minus one, four minus two, and eight minus four. So the first differences are not the same. So we know it's not linear. Then we're gonna do the second differences. So we've got uh, a quarter minus an eighth. We've got a half minus a quarter. We've got one minus a half. We've got two minus one. And we've got four minus two. So the second differences are not the same. So we know it's not quadratic. So is the function linear or nonlinear? It's nonlinear because the first differences were not the same. Is it quadratic? No, because the second differences were not the same and I can see by the graph it's not a parabola. So what we can do is divide, instead of subtracting, we can divide the values of y. So we've got one quarter divided by an eighth is uh, two, and the reason for that is remember that when you divide by a fraction, you multiply by its reciprocal. 
So dividing by 1 over 8 is the same as multiplying by 8 over 1. Then we're going to do 1 half divided by 1 quarter. So dividing by a half is like multiplying by 4, so that equals 2. Then we're going to have 1 divided by a half. So dividing by a half is like multiplying by 2. And then we have 2 divided by 1, which is just 2. Then we have 4 divided by 2, which is 2. And then we have 8 divided by 4, which is 2. So we can see that when we divide these values of y, we get the same number. So we get a common ratio rather than a common difference. We get a common ratio of 2. And you'll notice that the equation is y equals 2 to the x. So this common ratio tells me the base of the exponential function. So since the common ratio is 2, I know that the equation of this table of values is y equals 2 to the x. Okay, in this activity, what you're going to do is use Desmos to graph each of the following functions on the same grid. So you're going to type these equations into Desmos and see what they look like. And then we want to look at the domain and range. So I'm going to do 2 to the x. I'm just going to graph them. I'm not going to use Desmos. So 2 to the x, 2 to the 0 is 1, 2 to the 1 is 2, 2 to the 2 is 4. So I'll just do that. And then I would have a half, a quarter, and eight. So my graph's going to look something like this. So there's 2 to the x. Then I'm going to do 3 to the x. So I'll do that in blue. So 3 to the x. 3 to the 0 is 1. 3 to the 1 is 3. 3 to the 2 is 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 is about there. So that makes the same shape, but a little bit steeper, okay? And then on the right side, it would also approach the x-axis. And then we're going to do 4 to the x. I'll do that in green. So 4 to the 0 is 1. 4 to the 1 is 4. Makes it a little bit steeper. So as that base gets steeper and steeper and steeper, or a bigger and bigger and bigger, the graph gets steeper. So you can see that the graphs kind of look the same shape. All exponential functions look like this. They have this shape. The base is what is going to change the steepness. So 2 to the x, if I do 3 to the x, 3 is bigger than 2, it should be steeper. If I do 4 to the x, that should be steeper. If you do a half, I'm going to do half to the x. Uh, let's try this. Okay, so 1 half to the power of 0 is 1. Oops, that's not what I want. Let's erase that. It's a bit too thick. Okay, so 1 half is to the power of 0 is 1. 1 half to the 1 is a half. 1 half to the negative 1 gives me 2. 1 half to the negative 2 gives me 4. So you'll find when the fraction is a base, or the base is a fraction, the graph is going to go the other way. Okay, so you're going to try this on Desmos. You're going to graph these into Desmos and have a look at what they look like. But what you should find is if the base is a positive value, it will go up to the right. So on this side, we say it is an increasing function. And if it's a fraction, it will go down, which means it's a decreasing function. And then when we state domain and range, remember that domain are all the values for x, and the range are all the values for y. So looking at the graphs, the domain, it's a line, so it's going to be any real number. There are no values that we could not use for x. So all of these have the same domain. They will all have a domain of any real number. There are no restrictions on x. 
Uh, the range is also any real number. We, we do have a restriction because the values don't go below the x-axis. They never get to zero. Remember we said that that fraction can get smaller and smaller and smaller and never get to zero. So we say we can use any number for y, but those numbers have to be greater than zero. Okay, and that is true for all these graphs. All the y's are any real number, but they never go below the x-axis, so we always say that they will never go below zero. They're always less than zero, not equal to, because they never get to zero, but they will always be greater than zero. And then the y-intercept will all be the same because they all pass through the point zero, one, right? Anything to the power of zero is one. So any exponential function, unless you transform it, will have a value of 0, 1.